today, morning is here. and welcome to a very special episode of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out. Now, as you can see, my small co-host is not with us today. She is not here because I'm going to be talking about some boring things to her and she doesn't want to hear it. So, this being Independence Day and it being a very important day to my family particularly and to the great family that is America, I decided to quickly share with you the military history going all the way back to my great-grandfather who passed away on the 4th of July. That's right, this man was so American, he chose the day of American independence to make his exit. But that is not the highlight of my great-grandfather. My great-grandfather was the patriarch of a wonderful family of military men and family in general and a great mentor to my uncle and my grandfather. My grandfather served in World War II. He signed up when he was 17 years old. That's right, he was not gonna be drafted. He took his fate into his own hands and put himself in great danger for the sake of his country and for the sake of the world. Most of those guys that went into World War II had a little bit of superhero in them. His brother, my Uncle Richard, he joined. He served during the time of the Korean conflict, which brings me to my father, who was a hero among men. Before my father passed away in 2015, from 1958 to 2015, this man accomplished being an airman, a soldier, a police officer, a firefighter, a medic, and a judge, all in one lifetime. This man was a man amongst men. I myself am a combat veteran of Operation Enduring Freedom. I served in Balad Air Base, Iraq from 04 to 05, which is where I also met my lovely wife and the Yizzle's mother. That's right, we met in combat. Believe it or not, it's a real Rambo slash G.I. Jane situation. For all of you romantic wartime novel reading ladies out there. Woo! And as you can see, I have laid out the shadow box for my wifey. This is her retirement shadow box. She has all of five rows, five rows of ribbons and awards with one guy resting on the top. And we see all of the ranks that she has achieved all the way to tech sergeant, which is an E6. She was a very good leader. She was also, believe it or not, she was my fire team leader, which means she was my boss on the battlefield. There's another one for your novels, ladies. Today, we have put together for you a unique episode. It has some stuff that may ruffle your feathers depending on what side of whatever line you've drawn in the sand that you stand on. I don't stand on any lines. I stand in my treehouse where there's no lines except for the ones that I see in the tree and the ones that I draw on paper when I make drawings. However, I truly believe in the idea of America. I believe in the idea of the great melting pot, and I believe in the idea that everyone can truly embrace the idea of loving each other, accepting each other, supporting each other, and getting out of this horrible mentality of constant division. America is many things to many people. To a 17-year-old kid, it's the malt shop on the corner. <laughs> to Grandpa, it's the front porch in the cool of the evening. <laughs> to Mother and her family, it's church on Sunday morning. And to Dad, it's his favorite relaxation. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
It's the Cracker Barrel philosophers in Crabtree Corners. And it's the tycoons in Wall Street. It's all races, creeds, and religions. It's freedom to work at the job you like. Freedom of speech and to peaceably assemble. Freedom to own property. Security from unlawful search or seizure. Where's your warrant, Flatfoot? The right to a speedy and public trial. Protection against cruel punishments and excessive fines. The right to vote and to worship God in your own way. It is these freedoms that have made America strong. Okay, okay, so we got our freedom. But management's lousing up everything. Labor is at fault. It's ruining the country. My constituents, as your elected representative, I can assure you labor's right. Management's right. I'm strictly neutral. Labor, management, politicians, fooey. Uh, they can't tell corn from oats. Why, it's all right. Take the right. out of right. Hurry, right. Hurry, right. hurry, hurry, step right up, folks. Here's the answer to your problems. Dr. Utopia's sensational new discovery, ism. Ism will cure any ailment of the body politic. It's terrific. It's tremendous. Once you swallow the contents of this bottle, you'll have the bountiful benefit of higher wages, shorter hours, and security. Enormous profits, no strikes. Remember, you're the big boss. Government control, no worry about votes. Name your own salary. Bigger crops, lower cost. Why, ism even makes the weather perfect every day. And now then, because we are introducing this amazing item for the first time in this country, it isn't going to cost you one cent. All you have to do is sign this little scrap of paper and you get your bottle absolutely free. I hereby turn over to Ism Incorporated everything I have, including my freedom and the freedom of my children and my children's children, in return for which said ism promises to take care of me forever. Pardon me. Pardon me. And who are you, my good man? I'm John Q. Public. Ah, my fine friend, you're just in time to share this generous and gigantic offer. Sign right here. Mm. Mind if I read it first? Hurry up, Don't now, bother to me. No, I know I was here first. Oh, no, 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 no. Keep your shirts on, boys. No, I'm kidding. Freedom. Freedom? Well, sign away my freedom. Why, this is ridiculous. Don't be corny, brother. <laughs> sure, our system of free enterprise isn't perfect. But before we throw it away for some imported double talk, Let's turn the clock back a few years to see what it's done for us. For example, back in the 1890s, Joe Dokes was just a guy who liked to tinker around his barn. Some people thought Joe was lazy. Some even thought he was nuts. But one day, he had an idea. And because he was free to dream and dream and tinker, Joe had a chance to make something of himself and his idea. So, of course, some people didn't think so much of Joe's idea, but that didn't stop him. So, Joe got some money from young Aunt Minnie and Uncle Angus and Grandpappy, and Mr. Titus. When Joe's friends and relatives used their savings to help him buy tools and property, they were capitalists. Don't blush, folks. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Now, naturally, Joe needed some help. So he hired Willie Lumpkin, who was out of work anyway, and before long, Willie had the know-how and became skilled laborer. Because capital, management, and labor worked together, Joe's idea grew. It grew and did things even he never dreamed of. 
Today, the automobile industry provides millions of jobs that never existed before. And remember, this is a story of only one industry. There are thousands more scattered all over the United States whose history of development is pretty much the same. We've built a country under the American system that sends more young people to high school and college than all the rest of the world combined. Why, even in the Depression, our wages bought more food, clothing, travel, and entertainment than the wages of any other people in the world. Our country has a national income equal to the total national incomes of any other six nation in the world. With only 7% of the Earth's we drive 70% of the world's automobiles. That's just a sample of the things the capitalistic system has given us in only 160 years. Before signing up, you boys ought to try a little taste of doctorism's formula to see what you'd get in exchange for your freedom. Go ahead, try it. To me, I'll strike! The state forbids strikes. Wait till the union hears about this! Ah, yes, the union. Welcome to our ranks, number 1313. I'll take this case to the Supreme Court. The state is the Supreme Court. Our decision is as follows. No more private property. No more you. Well, the farm folk will put a stop to this. Farmers don't vote anymore. Well, what will they do for seed next year? You won't have to worry about next year. The state will do your planning from now on. We must fight to regain our freedom or everything is lost. Everything! Everything is fine. 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 When anybody preaches disunity, tries to pit one of us against the other through class warfare, race hatred, or religious intolerance, you know that person seeks to rob us of our freedom and destroy our very lives. And we know what to do about it. And now, gentlemen, no violence, please. Don't throw those bottles. Don't throw those bottles. No, 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 no. Working together to produce an ever greater abundance of material and spiritual values for all. That is the secret of American prosperity.
All right, men, step right over here and get your free cigars. <laughs> we needs is bigger elephants in all our zoos. Oh, my gosh. Now, just remember your old pal Bluto at the polls today, fellas. And there's an extra cigar for each and every vote you give me. Yes, sir. And furthermore, I promises two cans of spinach for every pot. Here's me past record, folks, which speaks for itself. You double-crosser. Steal my voters, will you?
Stay tuned, another action-packed lineup of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming your way. What a meal, what a meal, a whole bowl of cereal. What a meal, what a meal, a whole bowl of cereal. When someone one of the most extraordinary men of the 18th century. Philosopher, inventor, and patriot, he rose from obscurity to become one of the greatest figures in American history. In our struggle for freedom, much credit must be given to this illustrious... Mouse, for it was Amos who was really responsible for the great deeds attributed to Benjamin Franklin. And here's the proof in his own words. I was born and raised in Philadelphia in the old church on 2nd Street. Our home was in the vestry, behind the paneling. There were 26 children in the family, and with that many mouths to feed, we were naturally quite poor. 
In fact, as poor as church mice. And since I was the oldest, I determined to set out into the world and make my own way. If I was successful, I could help the others. But in any case, there'd be one less mouse to feed. It was the winter of 1745, and these were desperate times. Jobs were scarce, especially for a mouse, for we were a downtrodden race. Morning, madam. Could you use a handy mouse? Mouse? <coughs> By nightfall, I was becoming desperate. If I didn't find shelter soon, I'd be done for. My last hope was an old rundown shop near the edge of town. A sign over the door read, Benjamin Franklin, printer and bookbinder. Perhaps I could find shelter here, just for the night. Upon entering a strange place, I always took one good sniff as a precaution. Hmm, printer's ink. Fresh paper. Old books. And no cats. And just about as cold as it was outside. The place was full of strange contraptions. Tangles of wire. And a little round-faced man trying to write by candlelight. Good day, Mr. Franklin. Could you use a... Oh, dear, don't tell me. My last pair. Oh, what'll I do? Now I'll never get my paper out. I'm tired of his excuses. He'll settle up right now. So up goes, here they come again. He'll settle up. Open up. Open up, Franklin. We know you're in there. Hey, the rental, get out. We want our money. You've got just 24 hours, and then I'm taking your credit. And your credit. We're taking everything. It's a sure life, Franklin. Remember, 24 hours. You can come out now, Mr. Franklin. They've gone. 24 hours. Oh, what's the use? Oh, but you can't give up. Nothing ventured, nothing gained, <laughs> Mr. Franklin. My name's Ben, plain Ben. And just what would you do, uh, uh, whatever your name is? My name's Amos, one of the church mice from over on 2nd Street. And the first thing I'd do is figure a way to heat this place. All your heat's going up the chimney. And what would you propose? Put the fire in the middle of the room. Oh, nonsense. You want to burn the place down? Make something out of iron to put it in. See, that might be an idea. <laughs> Fixing Ben's glasses was quite a problem. He'd broken his outdoor pair as well as his reading glasses. Well, there was only one thing left. Try to make one pair out of the two. Let me see now. If I put, uh, perhaps if I. Ooh. Yes. There we are. Amos. Amos. <laughs> What, what will I do with the smoke? Use a pipe. Run it over to the chimney. I must admit the stove wasn't much to look at, but at least... It works, Amos. It works. Naturally. Say, I wonder if we couldn't make these things and sell them. Call it the Franklin stove. Why, maybe someday? Yeah, maybe someday. But right now, Ben, would you mind trying these? We have work to do. Uh, oh. Well, well, well. Will they do? Will they? 
why, Amos, this is a great idea. Two-way glasses. <laughs> By George. By Focals. Say, Ben, this your paper? That's it, Amos. Poor Richard's almanac. Sunrise 6, 22, sunset 7, 43, high tide 4, 20. A cat in gloves catches no mice. <laughs> Poor Richard's almanac. Poor indeed. But Amos, consider all the information. Information? Ben, when the sun's up, it's up. Why read about it? Oh, well, what would you suggest? First, I'd give it a new name. Something snappy, like uh, the Gazette. The Pennsylvania Gazette. Well, sounds all right. And then tell them what's going on. Give them some news, real news. Wake them up. Yeah, but where will I get news at this hour? I'll get it for you. Hold everything, Ben, till I get back. <laughs> Which nobody can deny. The Night Watch. Disgraceful. But what about the judge? A few pounds took care of him. Good. <laughs> now to fill our pockets, eh, Jonathan? <laughs> <laughs> Due to our inadequate fire department, the building was a total loss. Damage estimated at 490 pounds, 12 shillings, sixpence. Got that, Ben? Right, Amos. Then let's go to press. Lowercase T. Lowercase T. Uppercase S. Uppercase S. Uppercase A. Uppercase A. Lowercase T. Lowercase T. Uppercase S. Uppercase S. Space. 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 Semicolon. Semicolon. Another space. Uppercase R. Lowercase O. Uppercase T. Lowercase T. Space. Space. Upper E. Upper E. Lower R. Lower R. This fella Franklin comes right out with it, don't he? Sure does. Well, look at this. The baker's wine. Triplets. Well, I never. Hey, did you read this? More taxes in 46. I see, there was a big fire on Chestnut Street last night. Why, he's got everything in here. Tom Pinks. Seen Franklin's new paper? Yeah, the Gazette. The Pennsylvania Gazette. The Pennsylvania Gazette. By evening, everyone in Philadelphia was reading the Gazette. Well, Amos, we're a success. What a day. What a day. Yes, Ben. Oh, what a day. Now I can pay my bills and you can have cheese. Cheese. Mm. Good night, Ben. Good night, Amos. Stay right here. We'll be back after these messages. Hmm, super golden crisp. Rocks in the box, rolls in the bowl. And the taste is solid gold. All those golden pots of wheat Got a crunch to crisp and bold It's been moving and it's grooving it With a taste of solid gold Post Super Golden Crisp Cereal, part of this nutritious breakfast with a taste that's solid gold. Tracker here. Assemble masks. When Venom strikes, there's only one team to call. Mask, where illusion is the ultimate weapon. Get away, Hondo! Fire, Quagger, confirm! Too late, McLean! Fire! 
vehicles each sold separately with a figure. You'll never catch the vampire. We'll see. I'll fly convert. Mask, where illusion is the ultimate weapon. Mask, firecracker, vampire, and firefly, each sold separately, new from Kenner. Oh, Vince, they're really cracking down on safety belts these days. Uh, what's up, officer? I'm giving you a ticket for committing an anal level. Safety belt violation. Compliments of Barney Fife. We never wear safety belts. We're dummies. Weisenheimers. He gave us a ticket. A man's gotta do what he's gotta do. <laughs> Whenever Ben appeared in public, he uh, kept me under his hat. There was a small door in the front so I could step out on the brim. Thus, I was able to observe and offer advice without being seen by others. I say, isn't that young Franklin? Why, yes. <laughs> Good day, Ben. Good day, uh, Mr. Uh, uh... Governor Keith and Dr. Palmer. Governor Keith, Dr. Palmer? I read your new paper, my boy. <coughs> Congratulations. First rate. Keep up the good work, Ben. <laughs> Thank you, Your Excellency. I shall do my best. Thank you, Your Excellency. I shall do my best. Bright young chap. Yes, indeed. Uh, very alert. Seems to know what's going on. Just think. The governor spoke to you. You see, Ben, people are beginning to sit up and take notice. Yes. Oh, we are really getting someplace. Nothing can stop us now. Uh-oh. Post, Ben. Post. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Post? <gasps> oh, my goodness. What have I done? Amos? Amos? <clears throat> Amos. As the years passed, Ben's reputation grew. Letters poured in from all over the colonies. Requests for money, for information on inventions, advice in business, and even for advice to the lovelorn. I spent all my spare time answering them. And meanwhile, Ben puttered around with his experiments. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Amos, you should have seen yourself. <laughs> that was the funny... <laughs> Amos, where are you going? I'm leaving. Leaving? Oh, Amos, now can't you take a little joke? Joke? You call this a joke? Oh, but Amos, I didn't mean it. Now, please don't go. I'll never do it again. Well, no more tricks now. Promise? Yeah, I promise. It was shortly thereafter that Ben took up kite flying. To the framework of his largest kite, he fastened a small box, for it was his idea that I become the world's first flying reporter. I was so enthralled with the spectacle spread out below that I failed to notice a sharp pointed wire fixed to the kite just above my head. I was the victim of a plot. Amos, speak to me. Was it electricity? Was it electricity? Was it electricity? Goodbye. 
Goodbye and forever. Please, Amos, wait. Amos, Amos. And so I left Ben and returned to my family in the old church in the vestry behind the paneling. The years that followed were troubled ones. There were rumors of violence and rebellion, loud talk against the stamp taxes and other outrages. How about it, men? Are we going to stand for this? No! No, no taxation without representation. It was during this crisis that Ben was chosen to go to England to lay our case before the king. And now all the colonies anxiously awaited his return. What happened, Ben? What did he say? What about the taxes? Will he lift them? Tell him, Ben. What did the king say? What did he say? Gentlemen, I'm afraid the mission was a failure. The king was unreasonable. He wouldn't listen. All right, then. We'll fight for our independence. It has to be war. He's right. He sure war. Is. But, no gentlemen, war. there must be some other way. Some other way? What way? No, no, no we've no, got no, to no, fight. But what if we lose? Why, we'll hang for treason. What'll we do, Ben? Yes, what'll we do? What'll we do? If I only knew. If I only knew. Poor Ben. I couldn't help feeling sorry for him. It was a heavy responsibility. I could help him. I knew I could. But no. I couldn't go back. After all, a mouse has a little pride. It was a night in the summer of 1776 that I was awakened by a voice calling my name. Amos! Amos! <laughs> Could it be at this hour? Amos! All right, all right. Ben! Amos! Well, what do you want? Well, I, that is, I've come to ask if, oh, Amos, come back to me. Would you, please? Out of the question. Oh, please, Amos, consider your country. My country? Yes, Amos, there are big decisions to be made. I know, Ben. I know all about I need you, Amos. You've just got to come back. On my own terms? Yes, Amos, yes. If I draw up an agreement, will you sign it? I'll sign it, Amos. I'll sign anything. Very well. You shall have the agreement first thing in the morning. And wherefore? And where two? <laughs> so many twos in it. Will not tolerate. <laughs> Will not tolerate. Yes, whereas none of these conditions is a binding, absolutely binding. B I N D I N G. Good day, Ben. Come in, Amos. Come in. Here, let me take your hat and coat. Nice weather we're having. Now, could I pour you some tea and we'll get on to my problems? If you don't mind, Ben, will you sign this first? Yes, of course, of course. Uh, um, <clears throat> mind if I read it? If you wish. Ben! Ben, are you there? It's Tom Jefferson. Ben! Come in, Red. Come in. You've got to help me. Of course, Red, but... I've been racking my brains, working day and night, but it's no use. I'm stuck. But, Red, I thought it was finished. It is. It is, Ben. But I don't like the beginning. It just doesn't sound right. Uh, listen to this. Uh, the time has come when we, the people of these colonies... Yes, yes. No, no, not big enough. How about this? Now is the time when we, the people... Well, uh, uh, No, no, not strong enough. Uh, the time is at hand when we, the people, must... Oh, you see what I mean, Ben? 
If I could only find the words. Shh, ben, how about our contract? No, Amos, not now. Yes, now, or I'm leaving. All right, Amos, all right. When, in the course of human events, it becomes necessary... Ben! That's it! That's it! When, in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political band which have connected them with another, and to assume, among the powers of the Earth, the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature... ...the support of this declaration, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. On July 4th, 1776, the Declaration of Independence was adopted by Congress. I was very proud to have had a small part in the creation of this great document. And so, we are gathered here today to pay our respects to... Benjamin Franklin. For he was truly one of the greatest figures in American history. Stay right there for another action packed lineup of Saturday morning cartoon Max Out. Ten minutes to catch my plane. Hold everything, Fasso! One might even go so far as to say he's mediocre. I give you that paragon of pep and personality, Sleepy Lagoon. Picture a packed house. The kid's on. The orchestra gives him a four-bar vamp, and the kid gives it to him like this. Wild about Harry, and Harry's wild about me. Now the heavenly blisses of his kisses fills me with ecstasy. That's just a rough idea, you understand. He's the sweetest chocolate candy, and just like honey from a bee. Oh, I'm just wild about Harry, and he's wild about Ken. I do without he is from the south. Can't you hear me shout? Talking with my mouth, could you ever doubt? He's just wild about me. The kid finishes mid thunderous applause. Hooray! Hey! He takes a bow. They're screaming for an encore. Encore! Give us more! We want more! Let's have some more! Give us some more! Give us some more! Ah, oh, but does the kid give him another song? No. He makes with a banjo solo, like so. Well, here's 
this one the kid does that you like? Woohoo!
So, uh, you cats all copacetic here? What's she talking about, Slim? <laughs> she wants to know if we want anything else. Uh, what's the proper response? <laughs> Say, we're cool, chick. We are cold, chicken. <laughs> <laughs> what's so funny? <laughs> Never mind, Crowbar. Did they really talk like this in the 1950s? <laughs> they really did, Slim. Well, I say it is. Oh, yeah? Looks like trouble. Yeah, and not our business. Don't forget our mission. Right. The researchers on the Ganymede colony are waiting for the new security computer modem. And we better go and deliver it. We'll see about that. Oh, no. Stop. Oh. Oh, excuse me. No problem, ma'am. Easy, boys. We don't want to break up Luna's newest hotspot, do we? Thanks for the help, soldier. Anytime, ma'am. Anytime at all. Did you give him the shot? Well? Yes. Even now, the cyberbug is growing in his system. When it begins transmitting, we will know everything Colonel Paul Corbin sees and hears. Sure appreciate you letting us ride along with you, Didi. Hey, no problem, boy. Always glad to help Starcom. Oh, I'm not so sure about this, Dash. Regulations say... Listen, our orders are to take this new computer modem to Ganymede in one piece. And it's better if we do it without calling attention to ourselves. Right. A military convoy would just invite an attack by the Shadow Force. This way, they'll probably ignore us. Yeah, they can't attack what they don't know about. Can't attack what they don't know about. It works. We can hear and see everything Corbin sees and hears. Of course it works. But if Emperor Dark finds out... He won't. We'll disable the convoy and be in and out before Dark suspects a thing. Then I can tap into Starcom's computer and it won't matter what Dark thinks. My power will be as great as his. What's that rock doing there? It's not on the charts. Your deflectors can handle it, can't they? I wish. It's too big. We're in trouble. Well, gang, looks like we get a chance to earn our ride. Power deploy. Magna lock off. Starmax 1, you are clear for launch. Roger, Nanook. Bogey inertia equivalent at 6 9 G. Copy. And tracking beams are locked into phase pulse as of now. Coming up on Optimum Marine. On my mark. Roger. Weapons locked on target. Now. Maintain firing. Nice shooting slam. Ah, a piece of cake. Thanks for the help, boys. 
But it looks like one of the pieces got through. We've got a ship with a damaged drive. Uh-oh. I can't believe something big enough to do that much damage got through. Yeah, we blasted that rock into gravel. Tell me all about it. A uh, crowbar? Where'd you go, crowbar? You really are in space. Yuck! Huh? Oh, sorry. I was just remembering our last meal on Luna. Let me guess. That woman in the cafe, right? Ah, oh, well, yeah, actually. She sure was beautiful. It wasn't that so much, but I felt something with her. It was as if I knew her from somewhere, like we were old friends. Old enemies, you mean? But I think I'm getting to like you, Paul Corbin. The repairs are done. Time to get moving again. Uh-oh. Now what? One of the robot ships has gone haywire. It's getting a signal from auxiliary control. Can you override it? That's a negative. It's coming back right at us. We've got to get to auxiliary control. Romac, they're on their way towards you. Scramble the control codes and get out fast. While they get to the controls, we better get to the Starmax. I hope Crowbar can get control of that thing. I'd hate to destroy a year's worth of supplies for Ganymede. Somebody has scrambled the codes. Can you fix it? I don't know. Maybe. We can't lose that ship. Aim for the drive. We'll have to cripple it if Crowbar can't get control. Affirmative. Locking sensor. Aiming onto starboard drive tubes. How you doing, Crowbar? Not so good, Dash. Somebody did a real number here. Hurry up, pal, or we're gonna have to shoot this bird down. Copy, Slim. I'm working on it. You're sure the Nanook is in no danger? Positive. The robot ship will take out half the convoy, but not the Nanook. Good. We don't want anything to happen to the new modem, do we? We can't wait for Crowbar. It's getting too close. Better take it out, Slim. Affirmative. Stand by. Firing particle beams now. What happened? My weapon systems are down. We can't shoot anything. Dee Dee, somebody sabotaged our weapons. Change course. Move your convoy. Uh-oh. Somebody has put the ship into tracking mode. We'll have to ram it. Too late. We'll never make it. We can't stop it, buddy. It's still coming. Give up, Crowbar. You'll never make it. Oscillators, 60. Down IF, up 200. Rectify RF modulator, in and... Stay right here. We'll be back after these messages. Starcom! In deep space, the Starmax bomber and Captain Rip Malone are under fire from the evil Shadow Force! The Starmax attacks enemy positions before returning to Starbase to refuel and rearm, using magna power and energy so advanced it works without batteries. The Starmax bomber, part of the massive Starcom battle fleet! 
They're fighting to save the Earth. Shadow Force has a new airborne threat. The Shadow Parasite Attack Fighter. A one-man gunship with a weapon system that can blast anything out of the air. Almost anything. Starcom's new F-1400 Star Wolf can knock it down. Star Wolf, high-speed, high-performance fighter that powers open to take on anything Shadow can dish out. Shadow Parasite Fighter and F-1400 Star Wolf don't even need batteries. Figures and vehicles each sold separately. My Shadow Force space fleet will spread darkness throughout the universe! Infra Dark has a deadly new weapon, the Shadow Bat Battlecruiser. But Starcom is ready with a high performance, high altitude Starmax bomber. Armed with the latest high tech weapons, it opens up to hold the men and hold the ammo. But can it hold up Infra Dark Shadow Force? Figures and vehicles eat souls everything. The fight for freedom rages. Make it 10 seconds to impact. Modulator influx, go. My basic feedback, eight, steady. Seven, six, five, four. And terminal lock on as of now. Whoa! That's got it. Oh, brother, he stopped it just in time. Hey, uh, Crowbar, you cut that kind of close, didn't you? I had three seconds left, didn't I? Blast you, Corbin. But you're very good, aren't you? You intrigue me more and more. Got him! I found our intruder. He's on C deck, module 69. Stowaways are definitely against regulations. Especially when they try to blow up our ship. Let's go have a little talk with our mysterious friend. Romac, they're on to you. Go! Breeze! Nobody home. It's like he knew we were coming. But how? Dee Dee, our guest has departed. Can you find him again? Unless he monkeys with the security system, I'll find him. Could he disable the security system, Crowbar? Not unless he knows that the security wires are coded blue and green. I can't understand it. The system went down right after I talked to you. Yeah, it's almost like whoever this guy is, he's one step ahead of us. Well, let's see how he does against a Starcom search pattern. I'm gonna see if I can get the security system back online if that's okay. Might as well, nothing else seems to be working. I just had a thought. Could we be bugged? A hidden transmitter. Hmm, that might explain it. I'll go get Crowbar. Let him work on the security system. I can run a scan for internal transmissions. Why don't you stop playing with that and show me what your friends are up to? This ought to do it. Fire it up! You're saying Crowbar is carrying a hidden transmitter? Not carrying it, Slim. As far as I can tell, it's inside him. Inside him? It must be some kind of viral or bacterial radio transmitter. A cyberbug. Wonderful. How do we get rid of it? I don't think we can. Whoever did this gave us a Trojan horse we can't get rid of. Wait, I have an idea. Remember the old speed code Crowbar made up a few years ago? Calling Bondar, are you in position? I am here, woman. You may begin your fake distress call in eight hours. 
You're so kind. Say again, I did not copy that. I said just what I had in mind. Let's do it. I hope this works. Okay, yeah. I got it, I got it here. I got it here now. Okay. It's working. Huh? He understands. Blast it! What's wrong? I'm not getting anything but blackness and beeps. Romac, you'd better get out of there. I've lost contact with the Cyberbuck. Where's Crowbar? Waiting in the conference room. It's real quiet in there. Good. He won't be sending any information. We've also picked up a ship in distress call outside the Stevens asteroid cluster. Shouldn't be anybody there. We'll have to check it out. Regulations. It sounds odd to me. It could be a trap. We'll check it out. But we'll do it carefully. I have an idea. Hey! Hold it, you! Ooh, oh, oh. Hey, you can't go in there! <laughs> One of the emergency airlocks has been breached. Something's up. Looks like we'll have to act sooner than we thought. Hey! Hey! Ask him if he's sure he wants to do this. It'll be dangerous. Sounds like a fighter engine. It can't be. You didn't see any fighters on the freighter, did you? The cyberbug is malfunctioning. But no matter. Bondar will take them. Hmm. Come on, crowbar. Turn. How's it going, Slim? Almost to the Stevens Buster. Good. Let's show them where he is. It's the Stevens Cluster. They must be trying to sneak away. We've got to catch them. No! Towards you. What? Ah! Rose, Alpha, Bravo, Delta, pursue and destroy. Well, well. Looks like the Shadow Force has come calling. There's only one of them! What are the others? What? Chip in distress, all right, wouldn't you say, Slim? That's a vermin now. You get that? Whoever is spying through me? Bye. 
found us out. Looks like your Colonel Crowbar outsmarted you, Malvana. Yes, he did, didn't he? Well, one battle doesn't win the war. There'll be another time. How do you feel? Fine. The medics say you're cured of the cyberbug. They got the specs for the anti-cyberbiotic from Starcom MaxiFrame using the new modem we delivered. I guess maybe you'll stay away from strange blondes in the future, eh? Maybe. Then again, maybe not. Another action-packed lineup of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming your way. Shadow Force has a threat. Shadow Invader. Swing out suspension. Battle laser. And a motor that can blast anything off the road. Almost anything. Starcom M6 Railgunner can shut it down. Six-wheel suspension and a high-energy laser turret that can turn it into one mean fighting machine. Shadow Invader and M6 Railgunner don't even need batteries. Figures and vehicles each sold separately. The battle for Earth goes on. Starcom! On the heels of the most successful and innovative boys' action category of 1987 comes even more excitement for spring 1988. Now in front of me you see I have the four collectible mobile action pods. All deploy manually. They're all designed to fit the universal pod size. None of them require batteries and they all make a small play environment that enhances the Starcom figure play. Now I have the laser artillery mobile action pod in front of me. We open it up manually and you see it creates its own play environment. See the laser cannons open up. We'll just move this over to the side to bring in the medical bay mobile action pod. Once again, we open it up, open up the top, we slide out the hospital bed. We'll take one of our ill Starcom figures, place him in there. The command post mobile action pod. Once again, we open it up on the side like this, open up the top, open up the gunner, and you see the guns and cannons on the side. And we have our vehicle repair mobile action pod. The ramp opens up to the back. Ramp pulls out to the front. And we'll take our intergalactic mechanic and place him in there. Four collectible mobile action pods. We now come to the next category, which is the small vehicles. In front of me, I have the Starcom Missile Fox, a small land vehicle for the Starcom forces pod module automatically deploys and becomes a missile launching vehicle at the touch of a button. Now I hit the power deploy and the pod module opens up and you see the missile launcher rotates, elevates, and it really fires. It has rolling wheels as well, free rolling. No batteries required. Comes with a figure. Now this is a low-end vehicle used in ground to air assaults against Shadow. That's the Starcom Missile Fox. We next come to the Starcom Tornado Gunship, also known as the Air Space Transcopter. It's a small air vehicle for the Starcom forces. The pod module cockpit and tail power deploy as I hit the button, and it becomes a transport copter. It holds four figures inside and one in the cockpit, and we can open up the guns here, and we take one of the figures, place him in the cockpit, and he will become the pilot. No batteries are required, and as you've seen, the sidewalls fold down to form landing skids. It's a low-end, low-flying air vehicle used to transport and rescue Starcom troops over enemy lines. That's the Starcom Tornado Gunship. We now come to the Starcom Sidewinder, also known as the High-Speed Jackknife Fighter. It's a small air vehicle for the Starcom forces. 
Now the pod module automatically deploys. You see it has pop-up guns with extending barrels. The wings pop up and it has a spring canopy that works as well. It has Starcom's swiftest mini-jet ever, soars high above enemy lines faster than any of Shadow's vehicles. That's the Starcom Sidewinder. Now we come to the Shadow Spy, known as the Disguised Enemy Fighter. It's a small air vehicle for the Shadow Force. I hit the power deploy, and the module deploys automatically and becomes a fighter jet that can attach onto the wings of the Shadow Bat. I'll hit the spring action canopy. Canopy pops open, and we have a gun that opens up in the back. It also has swivel cannons. No batteries are required. We can put a figure on the back as well. It's a low-end enemy air vehicle that in pod form looks like a good guy, but in actuality, it's an evil spy. Starcom beware. This is the Shadow Spy. We now come to the intermediate size vehicles. Right here in front, we have the Starcom Sky Roller, an intermediate size land vehicle for the Starcom forces. I hit the power deploy button and it turns into a defense tank. As the control tower rises up, you can see that we just open up the ramp and we can place any of the smaller pod vehicles onto the ramp for safety. Elevating guns on the side, swiveling machine gun lasers on the front, and also we have swiveling guns on the side as well. Has lots of great visual action and lots of inherent play value. Starcom now has greater strength to battle against Shadow Force. This is the Starcom Sky Roller. We move next to the Shadow Bandit, also known as the Enemy Pod Lifter. You'll see that it has retractable wings that, when I hit the power deploy button, will lower to form landing skids so it can land safely. Also has a retractable magnetic arm so that it can pick up any of the other smaller pod vehicles and scurry them away. As you see, we pick it up in that fashion and we can release it at the flip of a button. It has a spring canopy as well. And when Shadow wants to learn Starcom secrets, it sends out the Shadow Bandit to pick up any of the Starcom pod modules. That's the Shadow Bandit. We finally come to the Shadow Blast Track, otherwise known as the Enemy Tank Transport. It has an extending front canopy that you just open up in this fashion, exposing where you can place four figures inside and two figures in the front. Now the power deploy action will release sequential power deploy features closes up the front canopy and then releases the turret as well. The gun oscillates and the turret will pivot 360 degrees. You'll see that it has roller wheels inside the treads similar to the Shadow Raider. Once again we see guns on the side as well. With the large and mighty blast track, Shadow may have the prevailing power on land. Well you've just seen the new spring 1988 Starcom product line. We're sure it's going to be a winner. He's always there, fighting for freedom over land and air. G.I. Joe! G.I. Joe's there! G.I. Joe is the code name for America's daring, highly trained special mission force. Its purpose? To defend human freedom against Cobra, a ruthless terrorist organization determined to rule the world. Some he'll stay till the fight's won. G.I. Joe will dare. G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe. Stay right here. We'll be back after these messages. He'll fight for freedom wherever there's trouble. G.I. Joe is there. 
It's here, the G.I. Joe collection. Infantry Troopers. Codename Grunt. Bazooka Soldier. Codename Zap. Mortar Soldier. Codename Short Fuse. Laser Rifle Trooper. Codename Flash. Ranger. Codename Stalker. Communications Officer. Codename Breaker. Machine Gunner. Codename Rock and Roll. Counterintelligence. Codename Scarlet. Commando. Codename Snake Eyes. Each sold separately. G.I. Joe from Hasbro. <laughs> They'll fight for freedom wherever there's trouble. G.I. Joe is there. G.I. Joe. Cobra's attacking our winter outpost. Call on the members of the G.I. Joe team. And here's Gung Ho, Airborne, Doc, and Snow Job. And every Joe has a two-handed battle grip. Get aboard the Battle Bear. It's G.I. Joe to the rescue. G.I. Joe. We chased off Cobra. Way to go, Joe. G.I. Joe Battle Bear. Joe and Cobra figures each sold separately from Hasbro. late. I need that chemical. I didn't want to look suspicious. Keep a close eye on those readings. What's wrong? I don't know. The reaction's out of control. It's going to explode! Everybody out! Sorry, gung-ho, but this looks like a bad one. Play it back, Lady J. This explosion took place two hours ago. They're evacuating the town as quickly as possible. Holy cow. But this is where they called us in. It looks like it was a secret Cobra facility. Right here in the U.S. of A. A lot of nerve, huh? That's not all. Look at these. What are they? And that's what we've got to find out right now. We're a bit short-handed, Duke. Scarlet, barbecue, quick kick, shipwreck, thunder, spirit. They're all on leave, visiting their families. Shall I recall them? Not yet, but notify each one that until further orders, they're on emergency standby. Let's go. The army is trying to evacuate the town. The engineers are working on the rock problem while we take a look at these crystals. All right, Tobu! And away we go! Listen, they're chiming. <laughs> Careful, son! Gee, I've never seen anything like this before. Any idea what caused the explosion, Tripwire? Frankly, I don't know. Wasn't nuclear? Wasn't TNT? Wasn't any of your conventional explosives? must have been working on piezoelectric crystals and come up with something completely new. Yes, high explosive crystals sensitive to the slightest impact. I think maybe we should move back a bit out of range. All right, I want a zone of silence around this area. 
There's no telling what might set them off. That's not the worst of it. Take a good look. They're growing. We gotta get these crystals out of here. If Cobra invented these things, they aren't gonna let them slip through their fingers. How right you are. Those crystals belong to Cobra. Get me the commander. At once, Baroness. Yes, what is it? G.I. Joe is guarding the crystals. <sighs> then attack now, before they're ready for us. We cannot. One wrong shot and all the crystals will explode. I don't want excuses. I want results. Wait, I have a plan. Tell me, Commander, who in all the world would you never let come to harm? Me. Fool. What about a mother, father, sister, or brother? I see. But the true identities of the Joes are top secret. Can you find out who they are? Yes, by tapping into Pentagon computers. Well, then what are you waiting for? Hey, little fella. You're not supposed to stop here. <laughs> <laughs> What in the... Help! Intruder! Now to copy the G.I. Joe's family background data. Hold it right there! We got this file before the fail-safe system shut down the computer, but it is all we need, Commander. Excellent, Baroness. I place my Crimson Guard at your service. Zemot and Tomax. What, what are, are your orders, orders Baroness? Baroness? Seize the families of these G.I. Joes and bring them to me. G.I. Joe will return after these messages. After these messages, we'll be right back. He'll fight for freedom wherever there's trouble. G.I. Joe is there. G.I. G.I. Joe and Cobra the Enemy, each sold separately from Hasbro. He'll fight for freedom wherever there's trouble. G.I. Joe is there. G.I. Joe is there. G.I. Joe is there. Enemy blockade! Send in the G.I. Joe motorized battle tank. You can make it go left, right, forwards, and backwards. The G.I. Joe battle tank. Smash the blockade! What a tank! Each sold separately. The G.I. Joe motorized battle tank comes with G.I. Joe, batteries not included, from Hasbro. He's a terrifying enemy of G.I. Joe. Destro is his name. Destro is his name. G.I. Joe, American hero, fighting evil Destro. Introducing Destro. You better watch out, Joe. Hey, what's going on? Destro's stealing our tank. We gotta stop him. We didn't get you, Destro. You've met your match, Joe. Destro is here. G.I. Joe Battle Tank comes with figure, other figures, and Destro sold separately from Hasbro. Now, back to G.I. Joe. Dusty, give me a progress report. We found a safe place for the test, Duke. When do we get the crystal? We're cutting one off right now. Your sample is on its way. Duke, out. Lady J. Yes, Duke? Send out an emergency recall to the Joes on leave. We're gonna need all the help we can get. Right away, Duke. Punch up the Joes' family background data. Yes, Commander. Codename Quick Kick. 
Real name, MacArthur S. Ito. Surviving relatives, mother and father. Current place of residence, Watts District, Los Angeles, California. Where do you want these, Pop? Ah, over there, son. <laughs> Is that Mac behind all those boxes? Oh, hello, Mrs. Jackson. My, my, I remember when you were just a scrawny little thing. Uh, excuse me, Mrs. Jackson. Isn't he a good boy? He's done nothing but walk in the store for his whole visit. Are you coming to the game with me tonight, Mac? <sighs> you bet I... Oh, I'm sorry, Pop. Look, I gotta go. It's, uh, my agent. He must have some emergency stunt work for me. You be careful, Mac. Uh, don't worry, I will. What's the meaning of this? You will come with, with us. us. Run, Mihai! I won't leave you! Oh. Oh. Take them! Codename Scarlet. Real name Shana M. O'Hara. Surviving relatives, father, three brothers. Current place of residence, Atlanta, Georgia. Dad? Brian? Anybody here? <laughs> I came here for a workout. But I wasn't expecting anything like that. Hi, sis. <laughs> Your reflexes are better than ever, Shana. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. But why the masks? Well, you know how each one of us fights. So we thought if you didn't know who was who, it would give us an edge. I know you from the way you stand, Brian. Oh. Trouble? It's a top priority emergency. Oh, no way around it. I have to go. Gosh, well, hurry back, sis. Count on it. Come so on, long, hurry. sis, so hurry back. Long. Well, let's get in some sparring practice ourselves. Who? Oh. You are my prisoners. Oh, yeah? This is one battle you cannot win. Wanna bet, boys? <laughs> no sweat, Dad! <laughs> Don't get cocky, Sean. This isn't practice. Yeah. <laughs> Brian! Patrick O'Hara, I have your sons surrender. Codename Thunder. Real name Matthew Harris Breckenridge. Surviving relatives, father, mother, sister. Current place of residence, Louisville, Kentucky. How's it sound? The timing on that third cylinder's still off. Chrissy, will you tell the boys the food's ready? Chrissy? Oh, this family. Ah! Did you hear something? Uh-oh, my emergency beeper. I've got to go, Dad. Go? Go where? Your mother's fixed some lunch. I'm sorry, Dad. I'll explain later. Flo, the dogs are burning. Hey, Flo, that son of yours. Codename Shipwreck. Real name Hector X Delgado. Surviving relatives, aunt, uncle, nephew. Current place of residence, San Diego, California. Hey, Jesse, don't I get a hello? Hello. What's wrong with Jesse? Oh, Hector, we figured he was old enough to know the truth, so we told him he was adopted. Huh. Well, don't worry. I'll have a talk with him. Jesse, can I tell you a secret? Yeah. What is it? Well, you may not believe this, but I was adopted too. You... you were? Uh-huh. You know, we're lucky to have people who love us as much as our real parents might have. Maybe even more. Hmm. Maybe a lot more, huh, Uncle Hector? Maybe. 
But the important thing is that they do love you and take care of you. That's what really counts. Well, what's that? Where are you going? It's an emergency, Jesse. I have to leave. Oh, okay. Well, hey, I'll take care of your gear. Thanks, buddy. Hey! Hey, Uncle Hector! I got a bike! Codename, Spirit. Real name, Charlie Ironknife. Surviving relatives, grandfather, cousin. Current place of residence, Taos, New Mexico. Your cousin is ready for the ceremony of womanhood. Uncle Charlie, I'm so glad you're here. You're as beautiful as the dawn, little cousin. Let the sunrise dance begin. Charlie, what is the meaning of this? I am sorry, but I am needed, Grandfather. You would dishonor Venus ceremony because the white men call you? They would not call unless the need is great. Then go, cousin, with my blessing. Already, you are a woman. Thank you. Barbecue. Real name, Gabriel A. Kelly. Surviving relatives, father and mother. Current place of residence, Boston, Massachusetts. Saul, have you met my son Gabriel? Joining the force, Gabriel? No, just visiting. I have reserve status. Let's go! I'll be devil, you guys! Check your suits and move out! I'll start search and rescue while you get a hose on the fire! Okay, Dad! Dad, watch out! Dad! G.I. Joe will return after these messages. Stay right there, another action-packed lineup of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming up next. He'll fight for freedom wherever there's trouble. Are uh, those the new Joes, Destro? Yes, Commander. Who's on the watchtower? That's the jungle trooper. Code name, Rakundo. And manning the howitzer? That's the flamethrower. Code name, Blowtorch. And the halo jumper. Code name, Ripcord. Who's by the bivouac? That's the dog handler. Code name, Mutt. And his dog, Jumpdog. They've not seen the last of Cobra. Watchtower, howitzer, bivouac, and G.I. Joe figures each sold separately from Hasbro. <laughs> I'm moving my feet for a taste of meat That yellow pop star taste Pop, 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 my feet can't stop Until they pop up nice and hot Because they taste so good Ooh, I'm moving my feet to the pop star feet Moving real fast cause the show won't last Real food on the inside, great taste all around Pop, pop, pop star I'm moving my feet to the pop star feet Because they taste so good On those occasions when you need to make a big splash, there's the Super Soaker 100. It has a powerful air pressure system. Oh, Buffy! A range of up to 60 feet. And a drenching spray. The Super Soaker 100. It's a water gun of a higher caliber. Also the 50, or the ultimate, the two. He'll fight for freedom wherever there's trouble. G.I. Joe is there. G.I. Joe. It's a Cobra attack. Get the G.I. Joe hovercraft. Get the new Joes aboard. G.I. Joe hovercraft holds nine Joes. It's the big new way to bring the Joe team into action. And it floats on water. Release depth charges. Yo, Joe. A real American Chase that Cobra. Way to go, Joe. G.I. Joe hovercraft comes with driver, other figures, and equipment sold separately from Hasbro. Now, back to G.I. Joe. Dad! Get back! Dave, move! We'll find him! We can't leave my dad in 
there. They'll get him out. Into the van. Wait a minute. Who are you? Not to worry, Pops. Dad. No, not now. Gabriel Kelly? Yes, that's me. Your father's safe. Uh, my men got him out the back way. Oh, fantastic. Chief, thanks. Can can I see him? Where Where is he? He said not to worry. I, I had him taken to the hospital for a routine check, but he's fine. What about the other emergency? I have to go. Look, tell my dad. I'll explain everything. Get going. Move it. Easy does it. Dusty, are you ready to make the test? Footloose is setting it up now. <laughs> Dusty to Duke. Detonation in 10 seconds. Nine, eight, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one! Dusty, Footloose, are you all right? Yeah, we're gonna take a look. Watch your step. Not a trace left, Duke. The crystals destroy themselves completely when they explode. Keep the area secure. We'll be there soon. It better be soon. Cobra will want to come after these crystals before we can destroy them. They'll come all right. The question is when. We have enough hostages. Begin the brainwashing. Baroness, I must warn you, this machine is experimental. You have tested it before. Only on Cobra soldiers whose wheels are not strong. Then we'll start with that kid. Not my little girl. Step back. Mom! Daddy! Is this the best Cobra can do? Terrifying innocent children? Quiet, Patrick O'Hara. You're next! Who do you serve, little one? I serve Cobra. That ATV. We're behind schedule. I see it. It's coming. Yo, Joe! All right. Be careful when you load these crystals. The slightest vibration could set them all off. Let's get them out of here. Gently, fellas. His will is strong, as was theirs. They could overcome the programming at any moment. Who do you serve, Indian? Uh, I... Uh, I... Do something! These augmenters! They will link their minds directly to the signals of my machine. As long as they wear these, they'll obey any order. Now, who do you serve? I serve Cobra. Prepare them for battle. Yo, Joe. Start your engines. <laughs> Close formation. There's a blind curve coming up. We'll scout ahead. Watch yourself. If Cobra plans an ambush, this is the place. Yo, Joe! Right on the money, Duke. It's a Cobra unit. But there's only 13 of them. Can you handle them? Leave it to us. All right, let's... Now! Now! Shipwreck, what are you doing? Now, now, oh, Jesse! <gasps> Sean! No, Dad! Mom, Pop, it can't be. Grandfather. What is it? 
Scarlet, what's wrong? It's... it's... oh no. To be continued on tomorrow's G.I. Joe. G.I. Joe will return after these messages. Introducing the Cobra Rattler. Check my missiles! Rattler's gonna stop Joe! G.I. Joe, American hero! It's Rattler! G.I. Joe's there! Cobra! Cobra! Wrong number! Not belong! No, Joe! Cobra Rattler comes with pilot. Other G.I. Joe and Cobra figures and equipment sold separately from Hasbro. He'll fight for freedom wherever there's trouble. G.I. Joe is there. We're gonna get Cobra this time. Our combat jets are on the way. Hey, check my missiles. They're A-OK. -okay. Great, I'm going down for a closer look. Way to go, Joe! G.I. Joe Sky Striker comes with Ace and two parachutes. Other figures sold separately from Hasbro. I got it! Wow! Introducing the G.I. Joe USS Flag Aircraft Carrier. Imagine being on the deck of this aircraft carrier. The USS G.I. Joe USS Flag Aircraft Carrier comes with what you see here. Other figures and equipment sold separately from Hasbro. In a top secret Cobra lab, an experiment goes out of control and leaves behind a formation of strange crystals. A team of G.I. Joes rushes to the scene where they accidentally discover the deadly secret of the crystals. G.I. Joe realizes they must move the crystals to a barren section of the Mojave Desert and destroy them before Cobra attacks. But meanwhile, the Baroness sends Storm Shadow to steal a top-secret Pentagon computer file containing the true identities of seven G.I. Joes and their families. Cobra swiftly kidnaps Quick Kick's parents, Scarlet's brothers and father. Thunder's family, Shipwreck's cousin, Spirit's grandfather and cousin, and Barbecue's father. And the hostages are brainwashed to obey the Baroness's commands. Now, unaware of Cobra's treachery, the Joes begin the dangerous job of moving the explosive crystals. What is it? Scarlet, what's wrong? It's our families! Cobra sent our own families against us. Can you get us past them? I think so. In spite of what Cobra has done to them, they certainly won't hurt us. <laughs> That's what you think, dearie. Indeed, the Joes are in for a bit of a surprise. Captives, raise your weapons. Fire! Destroy the G.I. Joes! Let nothing stand in your way! Father, stop! Sean, Brian, Frank, put down your weapons. Jesse, it's Uncle Hector. Put your gun down, son. Mom, Dad, sis, let me take you home. Baroness, the captives are, are resisting. resisting. Yes, but not for long. <laughs> Dr. Marx, increase the power. No, it could destroy their minds. Do not argue with me, Doctor. Do it now. Very well. Your weapons! Use them! Now! Look out! Gung-ho! Take over the rear 
controls. Gotcha! Take Route B. But that's a dirt road. Any bad bump could set off the crystals. We've got to try it. We need to buy Scarlet and the others some time to stop their families. Get them! After them! Duke, the captives are trying to resist Cobra's commands. But a greater power controls their minds. To save them, we must find its source. Right. But first, you got to get them off our tail. We... We understand, Duke. Good luck to both of us. Hey, Gung Ho. Easy with those crystals. You tell that to the bumps in the road. Scarlet to Wild Bill. I read you, Red. We're going to try knockout gas, but stand by. We may need you. Ready when you are, darling. Faster! Catch up to them! More rocks get ahead! Easy does it, Gung Ho! Another jolt like that could be our last. Lady J sure has a flair for the obvious. I can hear those crystals vibrating. Fasten your seatbelts. Looks like I'm gonna have to blast our way through. No! It could set off the crystals. Oh, you're right. But if we can't go through it, it's over we go! Oh, the crystal's vibration is increasing. Hey, let's keep this thing on the road. I left my wings at home. I'll do my best, but no guarantees. Wait until they're all in sight. A gas proof. I was afraid of that. Lead them this way. Forget the jaws, you fools. Go after the track. It's almost in the red zone. Needle, don't move another inch. Had a baby, that's it, that's it. Gung Ho, can you get us across? Well, if I don't, you can kiss that ten bucks, I owe you goodbye. Keep the ten bucks, pal. You just earned them. You're in my sights. Get him! Sorry, Dad. Don't hurt him. Hurry, get the net ready for the pickup. Be careful, Wild Bill. Not to worry, good buddy. I'll just rock him to sleep like babies in a cream. Don't congratulate yourself too soon, Jaws. Activate the battle suits. Yes, Barons. <laughs> Quick! What's wrong? Look! Some kind of energy destroying the net! Jesse! G.I. Joe will return after these messages. Stay right here. We'll be back after these messages. Imagine this. Hey, we're behind enemy lines. What's that? It's the Cobra Bunker. Follow me. Who's got it? Dreadnox. Torch, Ripper, and Buzzer. Let's tell the joke. The G.I. Joe checkpoint. Who's the commando? Snake Eyes. And there's Alpine. And Airtight. And the Joe Air Defense. G.I. Yeah! Yeah! Joe Air Defense, G.I. Joe Checkpoint, Cobra Bunker, and Joe and Dreadnox figures each sold separately from Hasbro. I get angry just thinking about it, it makes me mad. Little kids doing drugs, it turns my stomach. That stuff hurts. It stops you from living up to your potential. It holds you back. It hurts the user. It hurts his family. And it hurts his friends. 
I just want to shake some sense into you kids that are using drugs and thinking about using it. So remember, don't, or else. Okay? They'll fight for freedom wherever there's trouble. G.I. Joe is there. G.I. Joe is attacking. We're outnumbered. G.I. Joe to the rescue. The G.I. Joe personnel carrier holds 28 members of the G.I. Joe team. Let's go. Go get the new members of the G.I. Joe team. Here's Torpedo and Tripwire. Get the Joe team aboard and move them out. G.I. Joe. The G.I. Joe personnel carrier holds 28 Joe team members, each sold separately from Hasbro. The Super Soaker 50. Just pump up our powerful air pressure system. And you can soak someone up to 50 feet away. The Super Soaker 50 from Laramie. Also available Thunder Flash. And Super Soaker Wing Thing. Each sold separately. Back to G.I. Joe. No! They are unharmed! The suits protected them. Dr. Marx, the captives aren't moving. What's wrong with them? I warned you! The increased power of the transmission stops all creative thought. You will have to think for them. Signal our agent to pick up the captives. As you wish, wish Baroness. Baroness. Come on, let's get down there and haul them out! No, stop! Get out of my way, spirit. No! You must free their minds before you can free their bodies. It's a Cobra Mori! Wild Bill, keep an eye on them and report their location to Duke. Will do, Scarlet. Cobra's probably controlling their minds from a nearby base. We've got to find that base and destroy it. And if anyone can track it down, Spirit, it's you. Duke to Dusty. Dusty here. You and Footloose meet me at the rendezvous point on the double. We're rolling. This way. Cobra could have the entire mountain filled with hidden bases, so keep alert. Duke just got it. Yes, Duke. According to Wild Bill, you've got less than five minutes to find the Cobra base before the captives get to us. We have visual contact with the Joe vehicle again. Excellent. <laughs> Captives, cut them off! Uh-oh, do you see what I see? Yeah, and they're marching right at us. Duke, I'm gonna hang a left and put some distance between them and us. No can do, good buddy! There's a town in that direction. If the crystals explode, everyone could be blown to bits. Oh, great! Now what? It is here. Look, an antenna. G.I. Joe's here! They found me! You have soldiers! Use them! Ambush! Take cover! Scarlet, we have 30 seconds to contact! Roger, Duke. Run interference for us. You got it, Duke. Operation Dust Cloud coming up. Hey, man, it's not stopping them. Captives, shoot up their tires. Dusty, how come those civilians can shoot better and you can drive? Funny, very funny, Footloose. Thank <laughs> you. 
ensconced. Our situation is desperate. The crystals are going to explode. Hang on, Duke. We're at the base. We're going in! No, Joe! <laughs> Snake. Is this the machine controlling our families? Uh, uh, yes. Then turn it off. I can't. Any attempt to tamper with the machine will destroy their minds. Duke, those laser blasts are going to blow those crystals sky high. <laughs> What's happening? Hey! Our snake is slithering away! <laughs> He's gone! Jesse, run to the crystals! It's the boy! I've got to stop him! Don't move, Doc! Surrender the crystals to Cobra! Or suffer the consequences! G.I. Joe will return after these messages. After these messages, we'll be right back. The 4th of July would not be complete without the thrill and brilliance of fireworks. Fireworks Unlimited, America's largest distributor of quality fireworks, will make this Independence Day the most fun you've ever had. Through this special television offer, you'll get our giant assortment of wheels, bombs, firecrackers, shells, sparklers, cones, howlers, buzzers, and much, much more. A $75 assortment if sold separately for only $24.95. If you order right now by calling toll-free 1-800-972-1000, extension 620, you'll receive as a bonus a free brick of firecrackers and a pack of bottle rockets. And we'll send you our 36-page color catalog. Order this giant TV package now on your Visa or MasterCard by calling toll-free 1-800-972-1000, extension 620. Or send a certified check or money order for $24.95 plus $3 shipping to Fireworks Unlimited, Deerfield, Ohio, 44411. Cobra Commander, he is the enemy. He's the enemy of T.I. Joe. He's escaping! He's escaping in the Cobra Claw. Get the new jaws and get him aboard the Skyhawk. Introducing Duke. Roadblock and Spirit. G.I. Joe, American hero. G.I. Joe is there. Cobra Commander got away. But we captured Storm Shadow. Yo, Joe! G.I. Joe Skyhawk. Joe and Cobra figures and Cobra claws sold separately from Hasbro. Let's break for breakfast. Maybe those kids will share their tricks with a jump and gymnast. Having a workout, kids? We're having this good nutritious breakfast with tricks. Tricks? With those fruit flavors I fall for? Let's see your other tricks. One and two and oranges, lemons, and grapes, I see. The fruit taste of tricks is all for me. Rabbit. Silly rabbit. Tricks are for kids. It never works out. This number is a center for missing and exploited children. You call this number if you've been taken away from your parents or someone's taken you away from your home. Remember, it's not your fault. And it won't take care of itself, so pick up the phone and ask for help. That's what the center's there for. The number for the center is 1-800-843-5678. That's 1-800-843-5678. Now, back to G.I. Joe. Surrender the crystals now! Or I'll order the boy to destroy all of you! You won't get the crystals, then! It's worth losing the crystals to destroy you! Make up your mind! Scarlet, the Baroness has given us an ultimatum. Unless you can free the boy of her commands, we're all gonna be blown sky high. 
But that snake said if we mess with the machine, we'll destroy their minds. Nah, he was bluffing. But if he wasn't? There's no time to argue. Fire! Your time is up! Prepare to die! Jesse, no! All right, Baroness, you win. We'll... Our guys destroyed the machine. Jesse. Smash the crystals! Smash them! Don't listen, Jesse! Smash them, you little brat! I am not a brat! <laughs> you most certainly aren't. Come on down from there. Let's get these things off. When I get my hands on you, Baroness. Lady J! Duke! Can anybody hear me? Duke here. Everything is A okay. Oh. 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 They think that's the end of it? Send out the rattlers! I'll have those crystals yet! It feels good to slip out of those snakeskins. We'll have you airlifted out as soon as... Cobra Rattlers! Twelve o'clock! Get these people under cover! There isn't any cover! Then spread them out! Get them away from here! Okay, Duke. Me and my boys are staying. We will fight! Cobra! Hey, Taxi! Where to, man? The desert! And don't spare! Check! Joes, we're under attack. Need air support. Hurry! I repeat, we're under attack. Uh-oh. Behind these rocks. Oh. Come on, Footloose. Let's get out of here. Prepare the grapplers. Yes, yes Baroness. Ready, missile one. <laughs> to explode! Get us loose and get us out of here! Dad! Oh. 
anything! There's Jesse! I see them! They're safe! Yay! Where's Duke? He was right behind us. Over there! Uh, is... is everyone okay? We all made it, Duke. And it's back to square one for Cobra. Yo! Yo! Citizens, you have our deepest apologies for this incident. We've taken strict measures to make sure this can never happen again. Hey, guys, I hate to spoil the party, but that stolen file contained data on seven Joes. Look. Codename Gung Ho. Real name, Etienne R. Lafitte. Surviving relatives, 137 members of Lafitte clan. Current place of residence, Fer de Lance, Louisiana. You don't think the Baroness would mess with my family, do you? Revenge is just her style. Let's go. Baroness, we've been walking for hours. Quiet, you fool. I found them. Forward. Now, in the name of Cobra, I make you my prisoners. <laughs> <laughs> Take them. <laughs> but of course, Mamzelle. Ah! Where are my men? <laughs> you mean them? Have some gumbo, lady. <laughs> Mademoiselle, don't step on little Shoo Shoo! <laughs> Thank goodness they're safe! I'd say they're more than safe, Gung Ho. Maybe so, but where's the Baroness? He says she ran off. I think she do not like gumbo. Etienne, we've been expecting you for days. Where have you been? Grand Mayor. Well, I don't think Cobra will mess with this family again. <laughs> <laughs> G.I. Joe will return after these messages. Stay right here. We'll be back after these messages. Cobra's still in our plans. He's escaping in the Viper Glider. Joe, will catch him. It's the G.I. Joe Falcon Glider, flying high in the sky, sailing through the air. He's America's fighter. G.I. Joe can fly. G.I. Joe. He's a Joe. real American hero, flying high in the sky. He's chasing Cobra in a desperate race, soaring and diving in a great sky chase. Yeah, Joe! G.I. Joe Falcon Glider and Cobra Viper Glider sold separately. Figures included from Hasbro. He'll fight for freedom wherever there's trouble. G.I. Joe is there. G.I. Joe. A real American hero. G.I. Joe is there. It's G.I. Joe against Cobra and Destro, fighting to save the day. He never gives up. He is always there. Fighting for freedom over land and air. G.I. Joe Battle Tank, batteries not included. G.I. Joe Dragonfly Copter and Attack Vehicle, each sold separately from Hasbro. This is it, the Cobra Sea Raid. Cobra Sea Raid, it's a fighting machine. Out your blast, Joe, two smithereens. Incredible Sea Raid splits to become a mini submarine and a one-man armored glider. For attacking on snow and ice, the Cobra Wolf with twin laser cannons and special ski torpedoes. It's the Techno Viper. Cobra Wolf is vicious on ice and snow and hot on the trail of G.I. Joe. Adventure of G.I. Joe, Cobra Sea Ray, Cobra Wolf, and other vehicles and figures sold separately. Joe! He'll fight for freedom wherever there's trouble. G.I. Joe is there. G.I. Joe. I hope Joe sees Cobra's new weapon, Hiss. Destro's a genius. Hiss is unbeatable. Surprise attack. Call in the Wolverine. Go get him, cover girl. G.I. Joe. American hero. So long, Wolverine. Hurry, clutch. Wolverine's in trouble. Hiss is ready. G.I. Joe Wolverine and Cobra's Hiss, each with figure, other figures and equipment sold separately from Hasbro.
Stay tuned, another action-packed lineup of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out is coming your way. about the USA? Do you know about the government? Can you tell me about the Constitution? Hey, learn about the USA. In 1787, I'm told our founding fathers did agree to write a list of principles for keeping people free. The USA was just starting out a whole brand new country. And so our people spelled it out, the things that we should be. And they put those principles down on paper and called it the Constitution. And it's been helping us run our country ever since then. The first part of the Constitution is called the Preamble and tells what those founding fathers set out to do. We the people, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. Do ordain and establish this constitution for the United States of America. In 1787, I'm told our founding fathers all sat down and wrote a list of principles that's known the world around. The USA was just starting out a whole brand new country. And so our people spelled it out. They wanted a land of liberty. And the preamble goes like this. We the people, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. Do ordain and establish. Constitution for the United States of America, for the United States of America. in some fantastic races in the past, but the wildest is yet to come. I'm Matt Tracker, leader of Team Mask, and this is how it all started. Maxie, I agreed to let you join Venom because you're my brother. But don't try to tell me how to run my organization. I know what I'm talking about, Miles. You have no idea what you're talking about. The very idea of Venom going legitimate. Huh? Try to listen to reason. Reason? Reason? I don't know where you get these strange ideas. 
Don't you understand how much more power, real power, we could have if we established ourselves as a force for good? You think I need more power? With my computer communication center, I can be in instantaneous contact with Venom agents around the world. Venom agents who command the most sophisticated vehicles on the land or in the air. Vehicles which command the most awesome destructive power ever witnessed by mankind. Power! Power, Max! The kind of power not seen since the days of the dinosaur! <sighs> you dare talk to me about power? Tell me, brother, why do I need power? Because, Miles, like the dinosaur, unless you change, unless you adapt, you'll go extinct. I can't believe you truly think Miles Mayhem is on the level, Matt. If there's even the slightest chance Venom wants to go straight, we've got to hope it is on the level, Nevada. Venom spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on a public relations campaign to convince the world it's rehabilitated. I've got to admit, this charity benefit race they've sponsored has brought in millions of dollars in donations. Remember, Nevada, Miles once worked on the side of good. Mayhem was responsible for getting masks started in the first place. Until he turned bad. It is a difficult thing for a man to turn his back on the evil path. Let's give him the benefit of the doubt, Nevada. Listen to that crowd, Miles! It feels good to hear people cheering for us! And this is only the start, Miles! This charity benefit is the first step in a new beginning for Venom. The first step towards a future with respect! And there's Matt Tracker from Team Mask, ladies and gentlemen, and... And yes, it appears Tracker is actually going to talk with his former arch-enemy, Miles Mayhem! Please! Please, ladies and gentlemen, let's have silence. This could be a critical moment for world peace. Miles, it's been a long time since we could face each other without weapons. I... I remember how it used to be. When we both worked together, on the side of good. Perhaps it can be that way again, Matt. Maybe... maybe it's not too late. I don't care how much hoopla Venom's put on, I still don't trust Miles Mayhem. Don't worry, Nevada. Miles still has a lot of work to do if he's going to convince me. I'll be on guard. I'm pulling for you, Miles, but win or lose, I'm proud of you. People will remember this day, Maxie! There's no question, ladies and gentlemen, this is shaping up to be one of the greatest events in the history of automotive racing. And Matt Tracker and Goliath have held the lead from the very start. But wait, Miles Mayhem is buzzing. He's making a move. And Miles Mayhem takes the lead for Team Venom. Mayhem's using every trick in the book. They're all legal. Matt's got his hands full out there, Clutch. Clutch, Clutch, this is Brad. Do you read? Go ahead, Brad. I copy. I need your help, partner. Razorback's broken down and I can't do a thing with her. You know, Brad, the only time you call is when you need help. Where are you? Webster Avenue, just off Lincoln Boulevard. Hurry up, will you, Clutch? I hate missing the race. 
Yeah, so do I. See you later, Chief. I don't see any sign of Razorback. I'd better pull a Ewing and get out of here. And just where might you be going, me lad? We don't allow outlandish U-turns such as you were about to commit in the fair city of Chicago. Look, officer, I'm Clutch Hawks with mask, and I've got to... And I'm Sean O'Malley of the Chicago Police Department. And unless you want a ticket, you'll be pulling into that alleyway, backing out, and going on your way. Clutch, I need your help, good buddy. Razorback's broken down. <laughs> huh? Wildcat, I think we've been had. No time to lose. Can't keep this up forever. Maybe I can blast my way out of here. You're not going anywhere, Hawks. You're gonna make such a great piece of bait, Hawks. This race has become a seesaw, folks, and it's far from over. Glad to see you made it, Brad. Where's Clutch? Beats me, Nevada. But he helped you get Razorback started, didn't he? Oh, no! Great! Even the traffic lights are against us! That should take care of separating those two. Now to immobilize Razorback. Boy, how long can a traffic light take anyway? When things go wrong, they really go wrong. That's right, blow your horn. That'll help fix my tire. An ambush. That's what it was. And that means Matt's in trouble. Gotta get out of here fast. Get your on. Looks like quite a mess Clutch has gotten himself into this time. Are you all right, Clutch? A little shaky, but why do I get the feeling I was just a piece of bait to get you here? Stitcher, on! Go, go! Oh. Fire, Lester! Let's get out of here. The odds are too even for my taste. Firing sludge cannon! <laughs> they cut us off from Matt. We better warn him. and I will be there as soon as we can. We're still digging out from under their ambush. I don't know what happened to Brad. It's all been a scam, man. Miles set us up. Goliath One, do you copy my transmission? I knew it was too good to be true. This is Goliath One. I copy you, Goliath Two. And so do I! Have fun trying to 
to stop both of us, Cracker! I'd better get airborne fast. Flexer on! Release flicker! Blast it! He didn't take off! Fine! Stay on the ground, Cracker! Get him, drone! Attack program. Destroy tracker. Ready to fire slicer rocket. Lock in on target. Break off attack drone! He's too close! I should have known, Miles. I should have known. Well, you did. And it's gonna mean the end for you, Tracker. My, my. Looks like we've got company. Crowd all. Firing sludge cannon. Firing mud slinger. <laughs> I'm bound to hit something. You hit something, all right, you mud turtle. Careful, mad dog. You hit the drone. Fast, boss man! I can't get a shot at him! Just keep him busy! I've got other business to attend to! Mayhem is breaking off his attack. Why? Faster, men! The money from these donations and the gate receipts have to be moved before Venom... Millions and millions! Just what Dr. Mayhem ordered! You even had me fooled! You have to understand, it was necessary, Max! It was necessary to fool me? Of course! If you weren't convinced I was going to go along with your harebrained idea of turning honest, how could I ever convince anyone else? But me, Miles, your own brother! Oh, to show you! Never trust anyone named Mayhem! You never had any intention of going straight! You just used me! You didn't care about my idea! No! I never had any intention of going straight! And yes, I used you! And no, I didn't care about your idea! I guess it really was a stupid idea! Let me help you with the money, Miles. Thanks, Maxie. Between the race and this battle, I'm almost out of gas. Jet mode's using it up too fast. Gotcha, Tracker! <laughs> when my metal freezing bomb hits it. Yeah, well, let's see how they do against my lasers. Cruise control slow. Okay. Goliath One took a bad shot from Bruno's laser pod. Mr. Tracker, it's mayhem. He stole all the donation money. Millions, Mr. Tracker, millions. Mayhem. I contacted the police department, the Air National Guard, the Coast Guard. No one seen any Venom vehicles anywhere. All we know for sure is they haven't left the city. The authorities threw a net around Chicago. They'd never make it through unnoticed. I've talked to all my connections. No one knows where they are. They're here somewhere, just waiting for an opening. We'll find them. All we need is a break. Just one little break.
Mr. Linquist, there's something wrong with this water sample. Where is it from, Ames? The deep hole sewer system. The one designed a few years back to handle the increased population needs. What's this? When did the water start showing this much lead content? Since this morning. Get me the health department fast. This is an emergency. Miles, this lead highway escape idea of yours is a stroke of genius. What else would you expect? The sewer tunnel will leave me clear out of the city. Once we hit the outlet, we'll escape, and Tracker will never even know we've left. I wouldn't bet on that, Max. Firing Slicker Missile. Just stay calm. I know Matt Tracker. He's made a fatal mistake coming down here alone to even the score. He'll come to us, and when he does... It's Tracker and that Shroud Mask, Miles! I know. Careful now. We've got him! What's the matter, Tracker? You have to hide in the box? What kind of hero are you, anyway? Come and get me, Mayhem. Gentlemen, let's oblige the man! Funny. In spite of themselves, Mayhem was at least partly responsible for the charity getting that money. I'll tell you something that isn't funny, Nevada. Those Venom vehicles. Every one of them was souped up for this racing competition. Sounds like an interesting race to me. We've got Goliath, Razorback, Wildcat, and Meteor. I'd match them one-on-one -on -one against any racing team in the world. What are you driving at, Matt? Not driving at, driving to, wherever Venom wants to race. From Morocco to the jungles of Africa, we'll be there to do battle and race to the finish. Venom never gives up. We always have to be on guard. Because in the world of Venom, nothing is as it seems. Welcome, race fans. Demolition Derby Arena, the race is about to begin, and it promises to be a bruising duel to the finish. The object is to be the last vehicle in gravel condition. The drivers today are going to be using any trick they can to knock the competition out of the derby. And as for the rules, <laughs> well, folks, there are none. <laughs> This ought to be a breeze. There's nothing here that can compete with Wildcat. Just keep telling yourself that, Clutch. Maybe you'll actually convince yourself. Vanessa Warfield. They must be getting pretty desperate for contestants to let you and that bucket of bolts enter the derby. Hawks, by the end of this race, you're gonna wish you never heard of Memphis. Whoa! 
I just want to take one last look at these new brake drums, Ken. Huh? Whoa! What'd you say, Kenny? I didn't hear. Huh? Ah! See you on the racetrack, Hawks. You bet you will, Bruno. None of these fools will survive the wrath of Meta. But I want Clutch Hawk. Where is that coward? Adios, amigo. Mine. He's all mine. Hold it, Mad Dog. Hawk says my meat. Who says? Do you really want to challenge me, Bruno? Think about it. Perhaps it is better we join forces. I thought you'd see it that way. Now slow down that dump truck he's driving. Magnabeam, on! Huh? What's going on here? I'm not moving! All right, Vanessa, he's all... You fool! Now look what you've done! That jolt jammed my magna beam! Sorry to hear that, Bruno. Don't worry, you pretty little head, Hawks. Stinger, go to armor tank mode! Take care of Clutch Hawks. Phew. Wildcat can't take another slam like that. Now I've got Hawks. It'll all be over in a second. Wildcat, convert to attack mode. Come and get it, Warfield. Manta, go to jet mode. What a day indeed! Clutch Hawk's last day! I get the feeling something's about to come between us, Vanessa! What the? Mm. I've got to neutralize Stinger's attack! Can't shoot if there's nothing to shoot at. Now I'm ready. Mask on. No. Nice going, Vanessa. Look what you've done to Stinger. Take it easy, Mad Dog. We'll get Stinger repaired. Which is more than I can say for Clutch Hawks. Take your best shot, Warfield. Concrete cannon, fire! That'll be the day, Hawks. Whip on! You won't mind if I return your present, Hawks. You can do better than that, Vanessa. Here, I'll show you how. Huh? No. <laughs>
now, little cockroach. Prepare to feel the anger of Bulldog. What's that? I don't know who's driving that rig, but I like his style. He's closing in! Cut me off! One less cockroach for Boris the Tsar Pushkin to worry about. Who's next? Boris! 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 I'll give them something to cheer about. He may be big, but big means slow in my book. What? What's he doing? Defeated. No need to expose Manza to a vehicle I'm unfamiliar with. Nice race, Clutch. Better luck next time. Thanks, Dave. Yes, it is something you want. I don't like the idea of losing a race, but you fought fair. You deserve to win. Congratulations. Boris Bushkin doesn't shake hands with losers. Did good job today, Bulldog. Make Boris very proud. You should be proud. That's some rig you've got there. Boris needs no woman to offer praise. Maybe not. On the other hand, maybe you're not as tough as you seem. Clutch Hawks was saying you got him with a lucky shot. Lucky? The Tsar needs no luck! Okay, okay, Tsar. Maybe you don't. How'd you like the chance to finish off Clutch Hawks and Wildcat for good? For good? That's right, Cossack. Tonight, on a lonely road, my friends and I are going to set up a permanent detour for Hawks. I thought you might be interested in joining us. What is interesting? Clutch. Don't worry, sweetheart. It's only one battle in the war of life. Besides, it's nice to see you, Gloria. It's always nice to see you again, Clutch. Well, I'll see you soon at Mask Headquarters, Gloria. Congratulations to all the drivers in today's fantastic demolition derby at the arena. But particularly to Boris the Tsar Bushkin, a newcomer who seems destined for greatness. Yeah, mister, I gotta agree with you on that one. All right, Lester, take it easy. But he's coming, and it's time. Hey, who's this guy? This guy is Boris Bushkin, the czar to you. 
This is the kind of slime you call friend. Just a second, Ruski. No one calls Lester Sludge slime. How about no good slime, then? What? Take it easy, both of you. Typical men. You let your emotions be controlled by muscle rather than brain. Since this toad has neither, what is he doing here? Toad? All right, that's it. Hawks is going to be here any second. That's right. Take your positions. Big shot, you don't even have a mask. Unlike you, lizard. My face isn't so hideous that it needs to be hidden. Ah! It's Iguana! Demolition Derby Part 2 is about to begin. Mask on! Iguana converter! Come on, Hawks! Let's see you try to stop me! <laughs> you got it! Death fire! This time the game's for keeps, Hawks! I have a feeling I better convert this baby. That's right, dodge my fire. Well, he can't keep it up forever. We'll see how you hold up against an airborne manta. Lester, keep him busy down there. Come on, lizard, let's see what you're made of. You really want to know what I'm made of, Hawks? Sludge! Fire! Concrete cannons, fire! How disgusting! Just what I'd expect from Venom! Not this time, Hawks! Whip off! Here's mud in your eye! Mud Slinger on! <laughs> Hit me! That's it, Lester. We've got him where we want him now. This wildcat is blind as a bat! Time to introduce him to our new friend. Prepare to feel the power of Bulldogs. Ram him! Crush him! <laughs> That's better. Now let's see who's where. You should have quit while you were ahead, Bushkin. Mask on! So much for your big shot friend, Vanessa. I don't know why you bothered with that guy when you've got me around. A little less talk and a little more action, Lester. Right. One Swiss cheese mask member coming up. Your aim's a little high, Lester. That's all right, Hawk. You can't duck my shredder blade. <laughs> Say goodbye, Hawk. <gasps> I wish you hadn't done that, Vanessa. Really, I do. Be quiet, Lester. You've been nothing but trouble on this whole mission. I've been nothing but trouble. You mangled my shredder blade. And from what Bruno tells me, you did a pretty good job on Stinger, too. Okay, that's it. You're out of this one. Good. I was getting hungry anyway. I wonder if there's a decent truck around. Surely you don't count Boris Pushkin out of this. It's about time, Star. I thought you were asleep down there. Poor Clutch. You just don't know which way to turn, do you? Here it comes, Hawks. You're right about that, Vanessa. Courtesy of Mask's newest member. Huh? 
now to give Vanessa a little fireworks display. <laughs> Mask on. Comrade, fire! What's this? Mask! Of all the treachery! Well, we did learn a few tricks from you and Miles. I was wondering what was taking you so long, Boris. Is all the Russian saying, better late than never. I'll buy that. But I won't. What a shame you had to choose the wrong side to fight on, Bushkin. It's a rare day when I can put two mask agents out of business. Don't count on it, my lovely. You've yet to deal with my Siberian surprise. I got punk! The blizzard! I'm snow blind! I can't see anything! That is the object! No problem! I can fly by instrument alone! Instruments do little good when air is filled with Rhysonium disruptors! Rhysonium disruptors? No! No! These instrument readings can't be right! Now I'll teach this fool a lesson. Didn't expect me to pull out of it, did you, Bushkin? Give Clutch Hawk my regard when you see him. To steal a line, reports of my departure are greatly exaggerated. What? It's impossible. I know I hit Wildcat. I saw it explode. So that's it. I must have hit one of Wildcat's discs. You may have avoided total defeat through trickery, but I promise you both one thing. I won't forget either of you. That's good, Vanessa. We were sort of counting on that. Nice making your acquaintance. Don't worry, Bushkin. You'll be seeing me again. Well, you did pretty good on your first mission. And you were right about them laying a trap for you. Good to have you on our team, Boris. Now, I'll take that handshake for winning. Wait a minute. That demolition derby was strictly a put-on. You don't seriously think your little tow truck could beat Bulldog? <laughs> In the weeks to come, Venom really puts us to the test. We'll be right back with more Saturday Morning Cartoon Max out after these messages. And hidden inside the mask slingshot, there's a mini jet, a control... Tracker here, a simple mask, security break. Let's roll, team. Stop like spine, boy. Invert vampire. Shiny fly. Not so fast, boy. Slingshot engaged. Mask vehicles and Boulder Hill, each sold separately with a figure. Mask. Where illusion is the ultimate weapon. Mask slingshot and vampire, each sold separately. New from Kenner. An incredible secret is revealed. When innocent looking vehicles and ordinary men become an awesome fighting team, it's the secret of mask. Where illusion is the ultimate weapon. Piranhas getting away with the laser blueprints. Stop them! Condors. Waiting for takeoff. Mask vehicles in place and each sold separately with action figures. I'll let them off at the river. <laughs> right. But Gator's ready. And he never gives up. Supply, you're through. Mask, where illusion is the ultimate weapon. So this is the new hurricane. Hoo-wee. Glad it's on our side, Hondo. Tracker here. Assemble masks. Intruder closing in. It's the Venom Stinger. Look out. <laughs> hurricane engaged. Vehicles each sold separately. With a figure. Firefly hidden for the sky. Mask, where illusion is the ultimate weapon. I'm getting out of here. Mask, Hurricane, Firefly, and Stinger, each sold separately. New from Kent. A new racing team is shifting into gear. Mask. Tracker Sears! Don't race off on my account, Mayhem. Mask, Buzzard, and Delight, each sold separately with two figures. Buzzard, convert. Wrong. You flag cover. I'm heading upstairs, Nevada. Roger, Matt. Okay, Mayhem. This round's for you. Mask, where illusion is the ultimate weapon. Mask, Goliath, and Buzzard, each sold separately. Nuke from Kenner. 
First, it was Baja, California, which led to the Battle of the Giants down under in Australia. Senoras and senoritas, buenvenido to the greatest event in the history of Tijuana, the Baja in the world. Welcome to the Battle for Baja. And now, join with me to greet the most ferocious vehicles ever assembled for our road race. He looks like the son of a president. No, no, no. He looks like a race driver. Tijuana to Cabo San Lucas. Such a long drive down the Baja Desert. Such a tortuous drive for a boy. Boy? What? That is the son of El Presidente. Well, Boris, old buddy, this ought to settle it once and for all. I thought the Bulldogs settle matter during Demolition Derby. You and I both know that was a mission and I pretended to let you beat Wildcat. Then no excuses this time. This is it, you Russian bear. Without Presidente Sundrive and Goliath, neither one of us may win. You can thank Matt Tracker for lending it to him. President Vega pulled some strings to allow us to enter the race late. I guess he convinced Matt to return the favor. Doesn't look like much here in the way of competition. We're not here for the race, Pepsi. We don't want them to know that, brother. What are you doing here, Miles? The same thing you are, Hawks. My brother and I came to race. And from what I can see, there doesn't look like much in the way of competition. Easy, Boris. If they're here, they must have wrangled an invitation somehow. We don't want to start an international incident. Just stay out of our way, boys, unless you want to end up spread all over the desert. Easy, big guy. Save it for the race. The rules are simple. The first vehicle to cross the finish line at Cabo San Lucas is declared the winner. While on board the race course, good luck to all. Looks like the Mayhems are finished before they even get started. Crushing an opponent is more fun when you spring out the torch. I've got so much to learn. Talk about your torture tracks. What do you think, Wildcat? Take it? Yeah, baby. That's what I thought. Got to remember to stay within the pylon. Don't want to give Boris any excuses. Speaking of Boris, I wonder where he. Right here, Klotsky. What the? Hey, watch that stuff, Bushkin. Watch what stuff? Track announcers say there are no rules. He's like government in my homeland. Make up rules as you go along. <laughs> You're just a laugh a minute, Boris. Let hawks drive trucks for 10 years in Siberia like Boris, and then think about challenging Pushkin in race. This is what Boris likes. No one even in sight. Too bad you don't have the brains to keep your eye on the road, instead of the mirror, Pushkin! Huh? Bugshot on! You 
think your sad little bicycle can beat Bulldog simply because she has her paw? Come, Malloy, by now. Jimmy Pushkin's right about that. Better get airborne. He may be strong on the ground, but with vampire in the air. There's no way that that sick puppy can survive. And now to put Pushkin and Bulldog out of business. Then I'm a blade he won't hold forever, Pushkin. And you can't move fast enough to get off a shot. You're sunk, mister. But I'm not, Malloy. I owe you one, Klotsky. That's nothing. Wait till you see my bill for changing that tire. Mission completed, Miles. Diversionary tactic accomplished. Hawks and Pushkin both spotted. Good. They thought that was our primary attack. With those two out of the way, we can get down to our real business. My father will be so proud when I win this race. And nothing can stop me from... Mayday! Mayday! Request assistance! Urgent! This is Raul Vega in Goliath. Received your transmission. What is the nature of your emergency? Over. I have a severely injured man on board. Need immediate medical attention. Over. You're in luck. I was a medic in the Mexican army. I'm on my way. We are in luck. This race is important, but not as important as a man's life. That's right, little Chihuahua. Just a little closer. A little closer and now! Matt Cracker was right about this. Okay, now if I can just remember what he showed me. Fire, Maxie! Firing Malfar! Problem, Raul. Boris will keep Miles Mayhem busy and we'll have you out of here in a second. Enough of this! Flexer, on! Blast mask! You stopped in, Chief. I could use a hand. You sure can, Boris. Now we're rolling. This race is mine. Party time! What else can delay me today? Running attack program, sighting target, lock on target and firing slicer cannon. our price in ransom. Mayhem mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 
camp to Iguana. Stay behind and keep Bulldog and Wildcat off our backs, Lester. Just buy us enough time to get to the coast. My pleasure, boss. Iguana's in her own element out here. Those guys won't stand a chance. I wonder just how much the Sun El Presidente is worth to the Mexican government. Miles, we're about to find out. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, guys. Welcome to Iguana's Turf. Help yourself to some Baja Sludge. <laughs> you see, guys? Big ain't always better. Stay in one place, Lizard. Bad chance. <laughs> Just too fast to catch. Maybe for you guys. But not for me. Vortex on! You boys get going after me, Heavy. I'll take care of this desert track. I guess it really pays to pick on someone your own size. Right, let's go do the same. Bond mayhem enough time. I'm getting out of here. Your hunch was right, Clutch. Goliath's here, but no sign of Raoul. I've got him stopped, Clutch. Good job, Boris. We were smart to split up and search for him. I'm on my way. I hope there will only be cleanup work by the time you get here. Comrade Fong. Oh, all right, Switchkin. If you want to fight, then a fight you'll get. I'm weary of this, Pushkin. Pack your vehicle off. Huh, just because you say so? Because I say so, and because I've got President Vega's son as a hostage. Now do as I say, or you'll be responsible for what happens to Vega. I thought you two wanted a fair fight. Just a fight, Pushkin. Not a fair one. There wasn't anything I could do with Raoul as his prisoner. Perhaps we should call the authorities. No, we'd still be in the same predicament, placing Raoul's life in jeopardy. Mayhem broken off from the race. That's for sure. He's probably making for the coast. To transfer Raoul to a Venom ship, no doubt. We'll give chase. But your vehicle's the fastest, Ali. Can you scout ahead and confirm Mayhem's plan? I am on my way. There he is, guys. Just as we suspected. Once we get him on the ship, we'll be home free, Maxie. We can write our own ticket. What's that? Isn't that Bulldog? Yes. And she's a sitting duck. The trap! I can see that, Maximus. The Dressonium Disruptor will rule out mayhem calling for reinforcements. Fire! No way to reach Iguana. That's all right. I can handle this fight myself. Bullseye! 
No, no! I didn't order conversion to attack mode! this race in first place. No way you're gonna win this race, Bushkin. There's no way any of them is gonna win this race, or finish it for that matter. I'm just not sure you're ready to drive yet, Signor Vega. Don't misunderstand, Ali. I'm grateful to you in Nevada and all of your friends, but I've got to finish this race. I'm going to win it. It's, it's something I want to do for my father. <laughs> You are right, Ali. He is a strong-willed young man. But perhaps trying to prove courage to one's father is something to be strong-willed about. This one is, as they say, in their pocket. No sense taking chances, though. With this much of lead, I can stop and fill up my tank at Corsi's pit stop. Negative, Forrest. Negative. That pit stop catapult. It's a venom trap. Good work, Sly. I'd stop, but I've got bigger fish to fry. By making our own route, we should catch them just as they enter the city, Maxie. I just love breaking the rules, Miles. Look, there they are. You're right again, Miles! I'm always right, Maxie. I thought you'd have learned that by now. Boy, Mayhem is really making it difficult for me to win this race. Let me get an angle clutch. Concrete cannon, fire! Now to win this race! We don't get them yet, Maxie! than yours. I guess you're right. Come, my friend. I'd like to introduce you both to my father, El Presidente. That's where they'll be coming from, ladies and gentlemen. The Australian Outback. One challenger will lead his team over the finish line for this and the prize money. But the prize that really matters is the knowledge that you won the Battle of the Giants. Oh, oh, 
venison, mate. But the real prize the chaps are after today, Professor McDonald's secret metal formula. Do you suppose my late husband's formula really makes steel impregnable? The professor said it. I believe it. The best formula should go to the best man. Then I can only hope the best man wins. Hey, what? There's a fire in your eyes about this race, Matt Tracker. That formula's important, Chief. It's more than the formula. Shock, volcano about set? Volcano is magnifique! The plan to win, is this as perfect? Perfect in its simplicity, and the one plan they'll never guess. The no plan plan. No plan? Venom can't figure out what we're doing if we don't know ourselves. When you're up against those guys, it can pay to be unpredictable. How will Venom operate? Ruthlessly. As always. The trick to defeating Mask is to expect the unexpected. The trick is to make him suffer, then destroy him. to start the race. After you, Tracker. Gentlemen. It's a trick. When they move, strike. Miles, did you come here to race? We're gonna play monkey see, monkey do. That's your last trick, Tracker! <laughs> oh, Miles, you angry with me? Just be glad we're not racing them. But I they know the shortcut. Anything's possible. Take a look. Just don't forget the plan. But of course, the famous no plan plan. Venom's coming, Nevada. Your ears are good, Matt Tracker. Venom's going to throw the kitchen sink at us. Okay back there, Chief? For the time being. Well, my hunch is I'm about to be served a full course Venom dinner. So then I'd better get ready to... Deep freeze! On! Roadblocks. I'd better take cover. Shroud on. Drone! Fire slicer cannons. Fire 
melter cannon! Keep blasting! He may be hidden, but he can still be hit! Later for you, Tracker! Right now, your Indian friend! It is great fun to watch you play, but I fear this is no shortcut. Be well, my friends. Oh! Later, my silly friends. Perhaps we can play then. Now I must see if the others are making good progress. Cowboys, hold down the fort, Chief. I'm coming back. Bullet, sir! On! <laughs> Stay here, silly one! Freeze on! I, I could use some cavalry. The cavalry, she has arrived! Both on! on. You idiot! The drone! Buzzard! Of course! The slicer cannons! Drone! Slice up Goliath's controls! Missile, use it now. Matt, Nevada, I am going to try to lure one of them away. Birdman, he's heading towards the finish. Stop him. Matt, are you all right? Yeah, thanks. But how's the transport? Everything will function. How's the plane? Nothing will function. Miles, he can win the race. Yes, but he'll try to take care of us first. That's our one chance. Great, huh? The formula's gonna be ours! After I take care of some unfinished business. Oh, to await the pr- 
Hooray! Boy, here are men just behind me. At least you know where he is. Miles is waiting to surprise us. As they say, I have all the luck. I just hope they give me a little time. How much time do you need to fix the control? Wish I knew, Jacques. I will be forced to make the move soon. The finish is but a little while away. Don't forget, you've got strength and maneuverability. And he's got speed and air capability. That's the problem with you, Trailblazer. You worry too much about facts. Ha 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 ha. Ah! One other thing, I might be able to take advantage of Floyd's ego. Perhaps. Mirage on! Miles won't win this race, I will! That should put him out of commission, at least for today. Buckshot, on! I would love to stay, Floyd, but do see? She calls. The rock slide has blocked the road, man. Ambush. Nevada, make a U-turn. Attack Tracker! Oh, hey, uh, hey! Oh, hey, uh, hey! Totem! On! Round on! Time to see just how human that drone is! Possible to determine target. Target spotted. Nice kangaroos! Nice kangaroos! Help! Hey! Wait! Help me out! Oh! Oh! oh. Knock it off! Come on! Oh. Stop it! I'm it! Some lightweight should ground the bird! Good shot. This thing won't fly right and has no functioning weapon. Fire lava! Get out of my way! Ugh. Get back here, you worm! Ugh. Uh, just be nice, kangaroos, okay? Uh, ah! Oh, ew! Oh, ah! Oh, I hate kangaroos! This battle's over, Miles. My battle with Mask is never over. I said this battle, Miles. There's still another to fight. Sure, outnumbered three to one. No escape. Those are the kind of odds you like, aren't they, Tracker? I'm talking one-on-one. -on -one. You against me. What? We fight you? Here? With no support? No way! I'm talking about the race. The one we're here to run. And how do you propose we run? 
On foot? My... Our working vehicles are limited. Your vehicle runs, it just won't fly. Mine's the same way. So, since we came here to race, let's race. No weapons, no masks. Chief, I'll need to use Goliath as a ramp. And Jacques, maybe Volcano could dig a soft spot for a landing. Going to jump rocks? Exactly right. Understood. Leave it to me. Let's go, Jacques. Ready, set, go! Something Miles never learned. In the end, when all other things are equal, good will always win over evil. He's close! He's close! I can't tell he's got the lead! Good show, mate. My late husband would have been very proud of you. All right. Today, one man proved his worth as the best. He has won the Battle of the Giants and will receive his just rewards. The winner, Mr. Matt. Tracker. Mr. Tracker, your trophy and your formula. Whoa! Now nobody has the formula, Tracker. It was important, Miles, but not as important as the thing you can't destroy. The fact, you were defeated by Mask. My late husband would have felt the same way, Mr. Tracker. He would rather that the formula be destroyed than used for evil purposes. <laughs> it looks like Buzzbird agrees. <laughs> it's a never-ending race against evil, as long as you're a member of Team Mask.
Well, I hope you enjoyed today's very special Holiday Max episode of Independence Day Max. We put together a few shows that we haven't shown before, and we hope that you paid attention to the message. That is, we must fight for the goodness. We must be American in the way of the Hulk Hogan theme song! His entrance music, do you remember it? I am a real American, fight for the rights of every man! That's what we must do, my friends! Find ourselves in a much more zen-like, happy, and peaceful American environment. Truth is, guys, there's no way in a culture of consumerism that you can't also create a culture of addiction. And the problem is that we are all addicted to something. We might not be addicted in the terms that you might think of in your head when you think of an addict, when you think of someone stabbing themselves with a needle or putting something up their nose or in their mouth and doing it over and over and over again. If we take that principle and we think about the other things that we continually do that are harmful to each other and ourselves, we do them over and over and over and over again. We have to stop hating each other for our mistakes. It's time for forgiveness. We have to forgive ourselves. We have to forgive each other. And that, my friends, is what leads to a better environment and a better America! We gotta remember the stuff that we were being taught in all of these lovely cartoons that we watch. And I want you to understand, boys and girls, that there is a reason I put Schoolhouse Rock in every single episode. There is a reason why I put the anti-drug PSAs. There's a reason why I put the old school PSAs. There's a reason for the season. I don't do things accidentally. If I've done something nasty, that might be accidental because my, my intention is never to be nasty. However, my intention is always for you to enjoy yourself while you're thinking because it's the best way to enjoy yourself. So I want to spread nothing but love to you guys and I want you guys to remember that the next time you're dealing with somebody that you just can't stand, try to love them and see how you could be in that situation yourself. See how you could be that person, and maybe you'll approach them with a little bit more kindness and a little bit more compassion, which is the most important thing. So, I thank you all again for coming to this special episode of Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out on Sunday. And don't worry, ladies and gentlemen, my lovely co-host, my little wee friend, she shall be back for next week's episode. Well, we're Sunday, so this week's episode, really, this coming Saturday. This coming Saturday is the last Family Max of the season. So be prepared for no more mushy, gushy cartoons. There will only be... Nah, I'm not going to say that one way or the other. Because I don't really know. Because Leftover Max is just that. It's just a bundle of leftovers, and that's still coming too, ladies and gentlemen. We have some goodies coming before the end of the season, and then next season is going to be power-packed. So stay with us, and please, if you have not yet, go wha-bam! And Max Smash, that like button for every one of our shows that you have watched. And it would be very rad of you to click that subscribe button as well. And be here this coming Saturday from 8 to noon. Eastern Standard Time. Right here on Saturday Morning Cartoon Max Out. is very different now, for man holds in his mortal hands the power to abolish all forms of human poverty and all forms of human life. And yet the same revolutionary beliefs for which our forebears fought are still at issue around the globe.
the belief that the rights of man come not from the generosity of the state, but from the hand of God. We dare not forget today that we are the heirs of that first revolution. Let the word go forth from this time and place to friend and foe alike that the torch has been passed to a new generation of Americans born in this century, tempered by war, disciplined by a hard and bitter peace, proud of our ancient heritage, and unwilling to witness or permit the slow undoing of those human rights to which this nation has always been committed and to which we are committed today at home and around the world. Let every nation know, whether it wishes us well or ill, that we shall pay any price, bear any burden, meet any hardship, support any friend, oppose any foe to assure the survival and the success of liberty. This much we pledge and more. To those old allies whose cultural and spiritual origins we share, we pledge the loyalty of faithful friends. United, there is little we cannot do in a host of cooperative ventures. Divided, there is little we can do. For we dare not meet a powerful challenge at odds and split asunder. To those new states whom we welcome to the ranks of the free, we pledge our word that one form of colonial control shall not have passed away merely to be replaced by a far more iron tyranny. We shall not always expect to find them supporting our view, but we shall always hope to find them strongly supporting their own freedom, and to remember that in the past, those who foolishly sought power by riding the back of the tiger ended up inside.